Hi, thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. My name is Kenta. We're back here today in uh, studios of American Hako. And before I get started today, I uh, just, just want to mention again to everyone that uh, American Hako, uh, we, are st we remain open. Uh, we will continue to remain open. Uh, we are part of that supply chain, providing uh, products and services to some of these essential businesses that are in the medical industry, military defense industry, and telecommunications industries. Um, so we will rest assured that we will remain open. And um, while we're doing so, we are practicing physical distancing, keeping that distance between ourselves uh, to ensure the safety of not only our employees, but our customers as well. Uh, so I hope that everyone out there is doing the same, um, staying healthy uh, and staying well. Okay, uh, now let's get on with our episode for today. Uh, today's episode is on desolder tool maintenance. Uh, last week, uh, if people are still watching last week's episode, if they missed it, make sure you check out the YouTube, but we did an episode on tip maintenance. And with the tip maintenance, I went over um, some points on how to maximize your soldering iron tip life. And those were things uh, like uh, cleaning your tip, regular cleaning of your tip, regular inspection of your tip, and most importantly, uh, tinning your tip. Those were the three main points that I tried to get across to you guys. Now those three um, principles, they basically work on your desoldering nozzles as well. So make sure you're cleaning your nozzles, inspecting your nozzles, and tinning your nozzles as well. Um, those same principles work because the basic construction of a soldering iron tip, uh, it's pretty much the same as the construction of a desoldering nozzle. Uh, consists of a copper core, iron plating, and chromium plating. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I think we'll put up a slide of the basic construction of a nozzle for you guys so you guys get an understanding of the construction of a nozzle. The only difference um, is that the nozzle has a stainless steel insert inside of the copper core and that is where the molten solder passes through. So again the copper core that's where the, uh, the heat transfer occurs between the heating element to your application and on top of the copper core there's that iron plating protecting the copper from corrosion and on top of the iron plating there's that chrome plating protecting the iron plating from corrosion as well and like I said the only difference between the tip and the nozzle is there's that passageway created by the stainless steel insert inside of the nozzle uh, when you suck up the molten solder through the uh, hot nozzle and through the heater core and into the cartridge or the collection chamber so um, I thought it was important for everyone to understand um, and you want to make sure, again, same thing with the soldering iron tips. You want to make sure that you're trying to protect the iron plating and copper core as much as possible. And you do that with, again, regular cleaning, regular inspection, and again, very important, tinning your tips and nozzles. Just make it a habit. Make it a habit to always tin your tips and nozzles. Okay? Uh, but with the soldering tools, uh, the maintenance for the soldering tools, these desolder tools, because of the nature of the tool itself, they require a little bit more maintenance involved uh, for desoldering tools and that's what I'm going to go over with you guys today. Uh, points to check on desoldered tools will be, uh, for example, the nozzle. You want to check out the nozzle, you want to clear out the heating element, and you want to make sure your uh, cartridge or your collection chamber, uh, the filters associated with them are, are running smoothly, not worn out. If they are, then you want to replace them. I think, guys, uh, we'll put up a slide of that. Uh, areas to check, the nozzle heating element, and the, the filters. So, getting right on with today's episode. I have today here the FR301 right here by my side. Um, I'm going to go ahead. This, that's the FR301 right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this station on. I want to show the viewers what I have here on the mat. Uh, I have a few tools. And what I have here are some cleaning pins. Now these are used to clean out the nozzle. I have a couple different size cleaning drills. The cleaning drills are also used to clear out the nozzle itself. And this is a cleaning pin used to clear out the, uh, the heater core itself. And this right here is a nozzle wrench uh, which I will be using to remove the nozzle. And these are just uh, some replacement filters I have uh, readily available. And now that the uh, tool is heated up, you want to make sure that your tool is, uh, is heated up because you will never be able to clear out your nozzle if the, tool is, if the solder is solidified and cold. So you want to make sure that your tool is heated up and 
First thing you want to know, uh, do is make sure you know the size of your nozzle itself. Uh, this is a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, so I'll be using a 0.8 millimeter cleaning drill. And the first thing you do is you want to make sure that make sure you make clear out the nozzle using the cleaning drill first. Once you get that, you select you use a cleaning pin to clear out the rest of the nozzle. Point again, 0.8 pin with a 0.8 nozzle. And once you get that in place, you want to pass that through a few times to make sure the rest of the nozzle is cleared out. And after that, you want to be you want you need to remove the nozzle itself. So in order to do that, use this cleaning uh, rent, uh, not cleaning uh, wrench removal tool. Now the wrench has two tabs on the side. When you remove it, you want to make sure you press on the two tabs. And you press on the two tabs, the nozzle itself and the enclosure pipe will release like so and you have access to the heater core. And for the heater core, you'll be using a different type of cleaning pin, this larger one. And you just pass that through a few times. Make sure the heater core is free of any kind of solder deposits or flux that's passing through the system. You could even uh, Look through the barrel and make sure that everything is cleared out. If it is, reassemble the nozzle. And on to the next point is to release the cartridge and check the cartridge itself. And it's a clear cartridge, so you can see the amount of solder that's being accumulated. Uh, if there's a lot of solder being accumulated in there, just open up the front cap and uh, empty out the solder. And while you have the cartridge out, you want to make sure you check the filter in the back, the ceramic filter in the back, and make sure that you know you take it off, you check it. If it's dirty, worn out, grab a new one, and then put it back. Um, now when you're removing the cartridge, the cartridge has uh, t these tabs or ribs on the side of the cartridge. Those are meant to, for you to hold because uh, sometimes this cartridge can be hot if you use them for a long time. So make sure you hold them um, at, this, at these ribs uh, so you're not uh, burning your hands. And once that is cleared out, you just put the cartridge back in place and uh, you're ready to go. And again, if you're not going to be using your uh, nozzle for a while, just make sure you tin them before you put it away. So that's the basic maintenance procedure. Again, it's basic, simple. You just have to make it um, a habit, like I said. Always check the nozzle, the heater core, and the cartridge, and the filters. Um, that was using the FR301. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move on to this other side, is the FR410. This is our uh, more industrial benchtop soldering station, 150 watts of power. And the difference, the main difference between the FR301 and the FR410 is that the FR410 has more features added to it that the 301 does not. Uh, what type of features? Uh, sleep feature and auto shutoff feature, which will allow the nozzle, uh, lower, the, lower the nozzle temperature and the heater temperature while not in use. So you're not burning out your nozzles or your heater core. There's other uh, features like the preset feature, password lockouts, um, and also, there is a uh, very useful feature on the FR410 that the FR301 does not have, and that is this clogging indicator um, that you see on the display. So normally, if the, if the tool is not seeing any type of restriction, that's all you get. The bar shoots across the screen and comes back like that. But watch what happens when your nozzles get clogged up. That bar will shoot all the way across the screen and it'll say check. That means you have to, you know, perform inspection on your nozzle, your heater core, check your filters, check your cartridge, uh, make sure it's not filled up with solder. So that's just a nice indicator to have on the station itself um, that'll allow the operator to know when the performance is necessary on the tool itself. And for the FR410, there's a, there's a couple different hand pieces that you can use on the 410. I have it on camera 7. One type is the gun type handpiece, the 4103. Uh, the maintenance procedure on the 4103 is the same as 
the FR301 that I showed a little bit earlier. So you go ahead and use the cleaning drill and cleaning pin to clear out the nozzle. Once you clear out the nozzle, you can remove the nozzle and use a cleaning pin to empty out the heater core. Once that is done, release, take out the cartridge. Again, you can use these ribs to hold on to the cartridge. If there's any accumulated solder, empty it out. If the filters are worn out, make sure you replace the filters. So again, the, the maintenance procedure on the gun type handpiece is the same as the FR301. Um, and this is the other handpiece, the FR4104. It's a pencil type handpiece, um, which is a little bit different. Um, the procedure for the nozzle is the same. You use the drill and the pin for the nozzle itself. But the cartridge, the collection chamber on the pencil type handpiece is actually located inside of the handpiece here. So you just twist this back cap off here and you'll remove, this is where the cartridge is. And if you remove the top front cap, you will get access to a spring filter. Now this spring filter is where the solder gets accumulated in here. Once it gets filled up, you can throw the spring filter away, uh, grab a new one, look something like this, and just snap it on into the front holder and replace the spring filter assembly back in place. There's also a paper filter in the back end. So you want to make sure you replace that if it is worn out. And once you got everything back in place, you just put the, uh, the hand piece of cartridge back in place, snap it back in place, and you're ready to go. And again, um, if you'll be using it, go ahead and use it. But if you're not going to be using it for a while, just make sure you remember to clean off your t nozzles and tin your nozzles before you put your iron away and you turn the station off. Okay, that, that's the, uh, again, it's basic, uh, it's simple. Um, you keep up with these maintenance procedures frequently and often, um, then these tools will last you a very long time and they'll work like a champ. Um, that's the basic procedure. Um, I showed you using the FR301 and FR410. Those are more of our newer tools. If you happen to be using some of our uh, older stations, like the 472D or the FM204s, uh, 205s, uh, which use the FM2024 handpiece, uh, those are these handpieces that I have here. Um, so this is the uh, handpiece that's used on the 472D. If you have this handpiece, Again, the procedure to clean out the nozzle is the same. Use the cleaning drill and the cleaning pin. Again, I'll reiterate the fact that you need to know the size of your nozzle. Uh, 0.8 with a 0.8 drill. If it's a 1.0, make sure you go get yourself a 1.0 millimeter drill. The difference between this and the other handpiece is that, as you can see here, it's a threaded nut. So it's not that quick release action that I just showed you guys. You're going to have to um, unthread the screw all the way remove it, and then clean the heater core this way. The other difference with this older type hand pieces is that on the cartridge itself, once you remove the cartridge and you open it up, it's a spring filter. Again, the way it works is the same. The solder gets collected in here, so once that gets filled up, uh, throw away the spring filter, put a new one back in, and the filter as well. Replace it if necessary. When you do that, just snap the cartridge back in place and it's ready to go. That was with the 472 hand station hand pieces. If you happen to be using the FM2024 hand piece, again, you want to be making sure that um, they're turned on, the nozzles are warmed up and hot so the solder inside is molten. Uh, the procedure on this is a little bit different. Um, there is a little tool attached to the back of the handpiece. You can remove this handpiece and attach it to the front of the nozzle. And what you'll be doing is there's a tab on the side. Press and hold on this tab and pull the nozzle out. Turn it to the side and plug it in. That way what this does is it's allowing the heater and the nozzle to stay uh, hot and warm while you're performing the maintenance. Um, again, the nozzle is you use the drill 
and the appropriate pin to clean the nozzle. But for this one, to access the heater core, uh, you need to go in from the side. That is the reason why we allow the nozzle to be uh, fit in from the side like this, so that you can have access to the heater core uh, like so. And then you just empty out the debris. Once that's cleared, again, use a tool. Press on this tab here, pull it out, and then put the nozzle back in place. Put the uh, tool back in its position, like so. And for the cartridge, these cartridges, the orange cartridges that you see here, they're not, to be, they're not meant to be reused. So just pull it out, check the contents inside. If they're worn out, if you have a lot of solder already uh, in there, just make sure you, you can throw these out. Throw them out, go ahead and grab a new one and put them in place. Make sure the seals are nice and tight so you're not using vacuum, and, uh, and that's it. Those, that's for the FM2024 handpiece. Okay, again, it's a, it's a pretty simple, basic uh, maintenance procedures. Um, again, like I talked about last week, the important thing is to uh, always clean your nozzles, inspect your nozzles, and to tin your nozzles. That'll make sure that you're getting the most life out of your nozzles themselves and uh, make sure that you're performing these maintenance procedures to clear out the nozzle and the heater core to make, your, to make sure that your desolder tools are running, uh, running nice and smoothly. Um, if you keep up with these procedures, I mean, like I said, they'll last you a very long time and they work like champ. Um, I'll take some questions, if there are any. Anthony asks, can you clean the solder out of the spring filter or should you replace it each time? So the spring filter looks like this. And then, like I said, the solder gets collected in here. If you can, you can empty out the solder that's being collected in here and reuse it. But what happens sometimes is, you know, if it gets way down in the end right here and it's clogging up all the way to the back, then it's very hard to get that out. So I, at that point, I would, just, uh, I would just replace it. If you can remove it nice and cleanly where you can get the entire thing cleared out, yeah, you can try using it a few more times. But if it gets to the point where the solder gets already collected and it's filling up that hole, and then that, that means that the vacuum is seeing restriction and it's not going to suck up the solder um, at that point anymore. So at that point, just go ahead and replace it. Um, and while you're, you know, like I, like I mentioned, while you're checking the spring filter, the other important part is to check the filter, ceramic filter in the back, because that's where all the flux is being collected. That can also, uh, keep your tools from running at its, uh, at its best. So make sure you check that out. Next question. As a rule of thumb, how often should the tool be checked for cleaning? Hours of use. Um, I don't, I don't have a hours of use rule of thumb. It all depends on how often you're using them. Um, what type, how much flux you're using them. For example, the more flux you use, the more flux uh, it's passing through the system. So the more often you'll need to be performing the maintenance. Um, how much solder you're using, how many joints on a connector uh, you're desoldering, it all depends. Uh, but I would just keep in track every time you use a tool. Um, just make sure you take a look at the solder collection chamber. Solder collection chamber. Make sure there's not a lot of solder being collected in there. Um, check out the filters, make sure they're still good. And I would just start making it a habit after a few uses. Just go ahead and clear out the nozzle at least uh, to make sure you know all the deposits are in there are cleared away and that's another reason why the FR410 the clogging indicator on the FR410 is very useful because if you don't know how often you need to perform the maintenance you can take a look at the clogging indicator and it'll tell you if the system is seeing any kind of restrictions at all um, I think I got time for one more question Leo asks what is the minimum What is the minimum temperature of the stainless steel tube to minimize clogging? Well, the, the actual, what do you call it? The specs on the station itself is rated at 660F. So I would say that is the minimum temperature. That's all the time I have now for today. 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys found it helpful. Um, and for the next one, to complete the three-part series on maintenance, I'll try to do a uh, short uh, maintenance procedure on our fume extractor and smoke absorber units next week. We'll try to get that up uh, next Thursday, same day, same time. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, again, uh, hope you guys, everyone's staying safe, um, staying healthy. Um, thank you guys for watching again. And remember, keep your eye on Aqua. Thanks.